Hey, what's up everybody? Shinwar here with Geeking Out, bringing you the latest and greatest in comics, games, toys, and tech. And you know what today is? It's new comic book day. Well, I'm actually a, a day late. Uh, was busy yesterday, uh, just got back into the country. So I was away and uh, yeah, got a few books here to show you and then I'll be right out you guys way. So first we have Justice League of America, number 18. I actually dig this cover. It says Prisoners of Prometheus and a uh, nice cover. Next we have She-Hulk 159. Now this is part of the Marvel Legacy renumbering. Um, I think the next issue, part two, part two to this, Jen Walters Must Die, probably gonna drop this. Marvel, just give me Banner Hulk back. That's all I want. I like She-Hulk, but yeah. I don't really care for Amadeus Cho Hulk. He's off doing Return to Planet Hulk. Just give me Banner Hulk back, which I believe he's coming back in 2018 um, in a story called No Surrender. Uh, it's supposed to be this new crossover big event, whatever. But yeah, I just want Banner Hulk back, please. Next, we have Action Comics 991, the Oz Effect lenticular cover here. And this is part five, the final issue. And we are coming up on Action Comics issue number 1000. It's gonna be a big issue and I uh, definitely plan to get my hands on it. But uh, yeah, I like this cover, pretty good. And uh, we all know Doomsday Clock is coming. Next we have Suicide Squad number 29. Here you got Har Harley Quinn on the cover. I was about to call it Harvey Quinn, uh, like Harvey Dent, but it's Harley Quinn. And uh, yeah, pretty good cover. X-Men Gold number 15, part five in the Mojo Worldwide crossover event. So, pretty good if you like the X-Men. Big book this week, Batman Lost number one. Dark Knight Metal tie-in. Really like this cover. Like I said, DC's been hitting it home with their covers for these uh, metal tie-ins. And uh, I just like the, the red on it. It just really pops, really metalish. yeah. Next we have Venom 157. Big Venom fan, you got Kraven on the cover here, standing over Venom. Uh, one thing I don't like, um, and I know it's Mark Bagley doing it, I'm a big fan of Mark Bagley's work. You don't see it here with Venom on the cover, but in the book, in the actual, you know, on the pages, they're drawing Venom with like, you know, his jawline. So you can see his jawline right here. There's like a, a, a space and then like a drop of the symbiote coming down um, and then the rest of his jaw. I kind of don't like that. I do like the old school Venom with just like just the jawline, whether it be like all out, but I don't like that. It's like you see it and then it's like a, the symbiote connects right here and then it goes kind of I don't like that, but that's all good. But uh, I've been enjoying Lethal Protector so far. Um, there was a big surprise guest return in here. Um, no, I don't want to spoil it. I'm not going to say the name, but they're from, they were from the Maximum Carnage uh, storyline that happened back in the 90s. So it's good to see them show up in here. So got to love Venom. Next, we have Supergirl 15. Art Germ is on a roll with these covers. I really do like this. She's just like standing there and just coming out of her regular clothes, her civilian clothes. But um. It's funny, I walked into my local comic shop and they didn't have this on the shelf. They had the regular cover. And so I asked about it and like they pulled it from the back. So it was like kind of like, you know, secretive, but I just had to ask for it and it was there. So good to have this. Way to go, Arjun. And last but not least, uh, finally it's a mail call. Uh, while I was away, this book showed up at my house. Spider Gwen 25, Mike Diodato. Um, I believe it was Comic Exposure uh, exclusive, but I really like this cover. Happy to have it. Uh, like me, I like Mike Diodata Jr.'s work and uh, Spider Gwen, Gwenham has been on a roll, so finally good to have this. And my local comic shop actually gave me this True Believer Mighty uh, Marvel, well, what is it, Mighty Marvel Value Stamp book. Uh, you have it here and then it has like a list of the issues where the stamps can be found and then it opens up Let's See if you guys can see this it opens up and uh, 
You can actually cut the stamps out, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> I don't want to, to me, I don't want to ruin the integrity of the book, but the option is there. Uh, they actually have a few already in here, like uh, printed out, but then you can cut the rest and stamp them in there. I don't know what it's for, but hey, if you're a collector and you, and you want those, definitely. And we know Phoenix is coming back. So, but I, I'll just keep this. I don't plan on cutting the stamps out. But let's see, big news of the week. Brian Michael Bendis, 17 years at Marvel, uh, signs a, well, obviously he left, and he signed a exclusive contract with DC. Oh boy. Um, He's responsible for, you know, a lot of great storylines, a lot of not so good storylines, uh, ruined some characters, people would say. Um, created Miles Morales, created Riri Williams, and a plethora of characters, created a, you know, a lot of storylines. And he's going to DC, so let's see what he does over there. Let me know your guys' thoughts on that. I've been reading comics on uh, comments on Facebook, on YouTube about it. Some people are happy, some people <laughs> are happy that he, you know, he's leaving. Some people are a little upset. Um, but it looks like DC is really trying to get some star power in regards to writers. I mean, they got Jeff Johns, Scott Snyder. Uh, who else? Now, now my, Brian Michael Bendis. Um, I don't know. I'm fine with it. You know, I just, I do want the stories at Marvel to kind of step it up. I feel like DC's killing them in that department in regards to stories. But, um... Let's see what happens. Let's see. So make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll be back with more videos. I will catch you guys later. Peace.